Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin, and this is our third episode of our Street Food Around the World in Taiwan series. This time we are doing part two of our two-part Japanese food tour in Taipei. In the first part, we took you for the ultimate kaiseki meal in Beito, enjoyed the Japanese era hot springs, and then finished the day at an izakaya Japanese bar. This time, we are taking you for more Japanese food here in Taipei, trying out some classic Japanese dishes, some Japanese street foods, and then finishing with a street food style Japanese omakase, a sushi meal. I am so excited and looking forward to it. Make sure you stay tuned until the end because you're not gonna wanna miss it. It's gonna be a great episode. Let's go. This Japanese era building is called the Kishu On Literature Forest. So it's an old Japanese building that's now been converted into a cultural center. You can go inside, check out the tatami floors and just enjoy the beautiful architecture. There's a little bit of a kind of garden outside too. We're just stopping by on our way to breakfast. So our first restaurant of the day is actually in little Japan, Japan town here in Taipei. There's a lot of different Japanese restaurants and this is the place behind me we are going to and they are serving unagi. So let's go try it out. This place is super old school. It's all wood inside and completely packed out for early lunch today. And they are serving unagi, which is their grilled eel. So they've got the grill going, all the eels are skewered, and then they're dipping it in a sauce, which is their, probably their own special blend. And then they're grilling and dipping and grilling and continuing the process until it's perfect. And then it's just served on rice. So I ordered up the large here, and it comes in this really cool kind of lacquer box. And you can see, oh man, that looks absolutely beautiful. So I've got two pieces of eel, and then it's all served on rice underneath there. We've also got beer. Yes, this is my breakfast, but that's what you do when you eat Japanese food. You have beer for breakfast. And then miso soup too, of course. So all looks really good, but I gotta start with this. So let me kind of break effortless. Oh my gosh. That is just ridiculously soft. It doesn't even feel like fish. It completely melts in your mouth. You can taste the distinct eel flavor, which isn't overpowering, and it's nice and smoky. Their sauce isn't actually as strong as I thought it was going to be, so I'm gonna add some of this here, which is black vinegar, and pour a little bit of that just on this piece here so I can try it out and see if it's good with the black vinegar. And it's literally like on the borderline of being mushy. It's not but it's just so tender that it's got a unique texture to it. Oh. Mm. oh yeah, with the vinegar, that is really good. Man, that is soft. Okay, I gotta try the miso soup out. Next, looks like there's some seaweed, some tofu in there. Mm. Very light. Oh, this is such a good breakfast. And the beer is good too. This dish is super cool. It's the tamago, the egg roll that you commonly eat with sushi, but this time it's got actually the eel on the inside and it looks quite oily. These are huge bites. Just look at the juice dripping out of this. Mm. Mm. That is a thick egg. It's not similar to the tamago that you give with sushi though, which is usually quite sweet, almost like a dessert at the end of your meal. This one's still savory, and then the eel on the inside is just so tender once again. That is so juicy too, look at it. Wow. That was some really good eel. I know some people may be a little bit freaked out by the eel, but honestly, I think it's one of the best fish in the world. It is just so soft when they cook it that way. Couple notes, I'd say a little bit too much rice to eel ratio, and there are some little tiny bones that you gotta be careful with, but 
cheapest beer I've ever seen in a restaurant at only 60 Taiwan dollars. So a really good deal on the beer. But we're gonna go get to some Japanese dessert now. <laughs> So we're actually in Taipei Main Station, the train station, and there are a ton of different food options here, lots of snacks, treats, and there's one place that's serving an authentic taiyaki, which is Japanese cake, which is shaped like a fish. So let's get one. They use this really specialized fryer that is molded to make the shape of the fish, which is really uh, intricate. And then she starts by putting down a little bit of batter, and then they've got different toppings, but she was just making the red bean, or I should say stuffings, and then she'll put another side to the batter, flip them over, and then kind of press them down, and there you have it, your taiyaki. I think we're gonna try the red bean filled ones. They smell really, really good. So we bought the freshly made taiyaki. It's actually really crispy on the outside and it smells like butter and eggs. And you can see the uh, red bean, that azuki beans coming out from inside. I think I'm gonna go for the tail because I'm scared about the inside's gonna be way too hot. But let me try this. Oh. Mm. Look at that. I will say it's a little underwhelming. It's not as crispy as I think it should be. And then it's just stuffed with that red bean, which is really not that sweet. It doesn't remind me of a Western dessert like cake or anything else because the bean still kind of has a hint of savoriness to it, but it's definitely good. But this thing is huge. So this is like a big dessert, not just a little snack. Mm. So how is the authenticity? I would say it's pretty close, but I think they get a little bit crispier in Japan. And these are way better when it's like negative 10 degrees out yeah. and not plus 33. <laughs> Taipei Main Station is an attraction in and of itself. It's got this really cool kind of checkerboard layout and a lot of people come here and hang out. We're just gonna head a little ways down the street to these uh, famous Japanese buildings. As soon as Sabrina's done eating her taiyaki. How is it? Not bad. A little cakey. Mm -hmm. But I got a nice place to sit. Okay. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. They're closed until September. <laughs> So this is Chidong Street and it's famous for these preserved Japanese houses, a whole bunch of them. But unfortunately, it's closed right now. But even just looking from outside the gate, it is quite beautiful. All these buildings made of wood, traditional Japanese architecture from the colonial period. Ah, oh, I really wish it was open because I've actually never been inside to see, but it's too bad. Well, we weren't going to leave you without showing you anything Japanese. We really wanted to stay on theme. So we just came across the town to Nishi Honganji, which is this really cool bell tower. So I believe there used to be a Japanese temple that stood here, but it burnt down. They uh, preserved the bell. They have this bell tower here. There's also another Japanese style wooden building here that is now converted into a cafe. But this is just so cool. This bell is absolutely huge. Look at the size of that thing. So we actually biked over to Nishi Honganji and then on the way we saw probably two or three other Japanese era buildings that are well preserved, maybe even more than that yeah. actually. 
and that's just a testament to how much Japanese uh, culture and history you can find here in Taiwan, in Taipei alone. And there's just so much of it, it's really cool. We want to grab an appetizer before our big sushi omakase. Our reservation is at 7 p.m. So we're actually going to have some takoyaki, which is octopus balls from this really cool street food stall right here. Takoyaki is a popular dish from Osaka, Japan. And the way that she makes it is similar to the taiyaki. She's got a specialized pan that has uh, little indents that form the batter into a ball. So she fills it with batter and then inside the batter she puts a little bit of green onions, some red pickled ginger, and then a piece of octopus. And then she'll slowly work it and form it into that ball. And then she tops it with a little bit of bonito, which is dried fish flakes, and then also some sauces and some seasoning. We have it here. And actually Taiwan has their own type of takoyaki, which is usually cooked all the way through, but the way they do it in Osaka is like really creamy uh, on the inside. You can see all of that bonito, that dried fish. We'll get some mayonnaise, some other sauce, a little bit of wasabi too. Let me try. Mm. This one is very authentic in texture because it's got that really creamy center. And then you get that really bouncy uh, octopus on the inside too. And then some seafoodiness coming from the bonito. It's almost a little bit smoky and then tangy uh, mayonnaise and then the teriyaki. I think it's teriyaki sauce that she puts on top. It's really good actually. These are the perfect little one-biter snacks. They're almost like a dumpling, almost like a shaolong bao, but quite different at the same time. These takoyaki balls are really reminiscent of Osaka. It's making me miss Japan a lot, but it's nice to have a similar thing here in Taipei. Also, they've really nailed the decor at this place. They've got all the Japanese decorations and everything set up, and we're right in this tiny little alley. These are quite addicting. I really like them, actually. We were just walking to the sushi omakase, and wow, can you see it behind me? Oh, your head's right in the way. Oh, darn. Move your head. I'm trying. More. Ah. Somewhere over here, the sun is literally setting through all the traffic and the bridge behind me. It's gorgeous. We had to stop, take some pictures, take some videos. It's just beautiful. I've been looking forward to trying out this omakase place for a long time. So usually these omakases, which are the chef's choice meals, so it's like a set menu. They're usually reserved for high-end places, but this place is super cool because it's literally a street food stall right on the side of the road. So I'm interested to see if the sushi is going to be good. We're going to sit down, try out this omakase. <laughs> So they have three price levels. First is 800, then 1,000, then 1,500. And it's all up to the chef. It's seasonal, so we're not really exactly sure what we're getting. But of course, we've also got a beer to enjoy our omakase. So the first dish is this massive oyster that is served with some soy sauce and on a bed of ice. I think this has got to be a one-biter and it's going to be a big one-biter. Super fresh tasting. And then with a little bit of, I think there's vinegar and soy. So it's got some acidity to it. And it's got the contrasting texture. Some of it's a little bit more lean and some of it's a little bit more fatty and oily. Wow, that's a good oyster. This next one is served almost like a shot and there's a bunch of different ingredients in there. I see some, I believe it's onions. I see some seaweed, some green onions. Um, not exactly sure if this one's gonna be a guessing game. That is nice. There's no, I don't think there's any meat in there. Just vegetables, a little bit oily, yeah. Next up, we've got an array of different things. A couple of vegetables, radish, cucumbers, 
and then uh, a white fish, sashimi style. That's what I'm gonna go for, the little dip of soy. Try that first. Oh wow, so oily. Wow, melt in your mouth. We've also got these crispy fried burdock, which is almost like you told me, like French fries. It's definitely savory, but also a little bit sweet. Super crispy. Next up, we've got bluefin tuna. This is actually Taiwanese tuna only um, in May and June from Donggang, where we actually filmed a video a couple weeks ago. And this stuff looks really fresh and good. Little dip of soy. That's the lean cut, but it's still so fatty and oily that you don't even need teeth to eat it. And then there's just that natural tuna flavor. It's so hard to describe, but so good. This time it's squid, we were told no sauce. Looks like a little topping of maybe some sort of seaweed. Mm. Wow, that is bursting with flavor. Whatever that seaweed mixture was on the top was extremely salty, so it kind of dominated the flavor, but the texture of the squid is really nice and soft. Next up is a little fatty tuna roll. He told me that I gotta chase this one with beer. Got some minced tuna on the inside. So tender. I know I keep saying that, but it's really just so melted in your mouth. Next up is uni on rice, so like nigiri style, and this is just golden. I gotta be careful, so I'm going in with my hands. <laughs> Always a little powerful in flavor. You get that little hint of almost iodine flavor from the uni, but what makes it such a prime seafood is the texture. It is just on the brink of being a liquid still solid but very close to being a liquid next up is the raw shrimp nice dab of wasabi hiding in there it's never my favorite the texture kind of freaks me out a little bit because it's got this kind of slimy texture but the flavor is really good and it's just so fresh so what do you think so far, Scram? Absolutely love this place. I can't believe we're on this side of the street. I can't believe this is street food. This is amazing. This is what you find in those private restaurants in Japan. The food's awesome. Quality's great. This one is super cool. It's the head of the prawn, but they've stuffed it with rice and all of those uh, head juices on the inside. So I'm not 100% sure on how to eat this, but I'm just gonna kind of bite it and see what I can do. Oh yeah. It's got a really strong prawn flavor because they've kind of concentrated all of those head juices, the tamale, in the rice. So it's really soaked in, become really flavorful. We were having a lot of fun just doing uh, <laughs> cheers with the chefs here, and they're really friendly. Hey, come by. Next up is one of my all time favorites, probably my favorite the Aji, the horse mackerel. And they've actually got a couple of them laying right out in front of us, topped with a little bit of scallions. The thing that makes that piece my favorite is, once again, the texture, but it's different than the other ones. It's not as oily, it's actually more lean, but it's got that silver skin on the outside, which gives it a firm texture on the outside and then soft on the inside. And then they always top it with a little bit of that scallion, which gives it a nice flavor. So we are actually skipping a few pieces here and there for the camera just to uh, keep things concise but uh, they are just stopping us full of sushi here. So we've actually got the surf clam next, which is a really interesting piece. Mm. That's got a completely different texture. Almost bouncy, like almost chewy. Quick correction, not a surf. 
clam, though it's an arc shell. It's still really good though. No sauce. No sauce. So the chefs just gave us this one. They said this is off menu. They just wanted to give us something because we are filming super friendly. And this is the grilled uh, bamboo shoot. And it honestly looks like it's almost caramelized. It looks like a dessert. Let's try it out. Wow. It is almost like a dessert. Mm, that's definitely not traditional Japanese. That's leaning Taiwanese style. And so juicy and smoky. Yum. you see the cake arrive at the end because when you see this the meal is over this is dessert it looks really good oh man it almost has the same texture as some of that tuna it's like creamy on the inside yum mm. What a meal. Definitely no frills, but I'd say for 1,000 Taiwan dollars, we went with the middle range. You get so much. We didn't film all the pieces, but there had to be more than 15. I'd say there's oh probably gosh, 16 or 18. 17, 18, yeah. We are absolutely stuffed after a day of eating Japanese food and drinking Japanese beer. But this place, I would definitely recommend. I'd say that the price is lower because you're on the side of the street, yeah. but in my opinion, it actually amplifies the experience where a meal like this in Tokyo and Ginza is going to be costing you literally upwards of 500 US dollars yeah. per person. Yeah. And this is like, what, 30 US dollars per person, yeah. 35 US dollars per person? Yeah. Incredible. All of the, the fish was super fresh and super high quality. And that's it for part two of our Japanese food tour here in Taipei. So if you'd like to become a Patreon, hit the link down in the description. You can get access to our monthly blooper reels. What? <laughs> and also to our personally curated food maps where we put places like this on a map for you to easily find on your travels. And we have cities all across the world. So check out our Patreon down below. Really incredible. What do you think the best thing we ate today was, Sabrina? Oh my gosh, this sushi omakase blew me away. Loved every minute of it. Every piece of sushi that we had, everything was really delicious. Yeah, I'd have to say, what? Probably this. I mean, this morning the unagi was really good, and then we had the taiyaki. Everything was really good. Takoyaki was good takoyaki, too. Takoyaki, yeah, but I, definitely, I mean, no question. It's got to be the omakase. That yeah, was so course. delicious. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next episode of Chopstick Travel soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.